So here we are. Hello and welcome to the, the Two Mickey Marketing Mouse Podcast. Club. Yeah, so the, the Mickey <laughs> Mouse Club. Welcome to the Two Brain Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Mateo Lopez. This is our first time using these fancy mics and these fancy headphones. Um, but for those new who are tuning in, I'm one of the digital marketing mentors at Two Brain Business. Uh, so thanks for, for listening, I guess. This is our weekly dose of digital marketing magic. Every week, we're going to go over marketing campaign strategies, useful tips, and updates to keep you in the loop on the ever-changing landscape of advertising on the internet for your business. And we just want to make sure you stay ahead of the curve so your business can continue to grow. And today, we got a special guest, Jeff Juca, over, uh, over in West Little Rock, yep. Arkansas, Arkansas. Arkansas. I know, yeah. Kansas is Kansas, Arkansas is Arkansas. We spell it funny. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to learn a little bit more about Jeff, um, his gym, and kind of how it's changed since working with Two Brain and, and uh, using some of the strategies we we teach. So, uh, Jeff, who are you? Where are you from? What's your business? I already said it all. I already said it <laughs> West Little Rock CrossFit, but yeah, how, how long have you guys how, how long have you guys been open? So we've been open since uh, May of 2012. Uh, if you that we've been affiliated since uh, actually April 30th of 2012, and before that, I actually was doing CrossFit out of a, a Globo gym that I was the manager of, which was interesting time because people would go tell me they were going to go complain to the manager, but I was the manager. Oh. So like I would, they were like, I'm going to go and I'm like, okay. And then I go run upstairs and I get behind the desk. I'm like, what was your, what was your complaint again? Uh, so yeah, that didn't last very long. Uh, started out in my garage in January, affiliated in April. Uh, so coming up at uh, this May will be seven years. Wait, what were they complaining about that you were slamming, slamming barbells? No, that I would take all the barbells. And uh, cause I mean, it's a 20,000 square foot gym. So naturally it has like three barbells. Right. And um, yeah, we would take them cause we had to do stuff. I, I brought my own bumper plates, which were like, I don't know if you remember, they were like the right multicolored ones that had mm -hmm. like nothing on, like they didn't even have the weights on them. You just had to guess kind of. Yeah. So like I brought my own, I would put them on a truck and bring them in every time. Like 11 o'clock just turned out to be a bunch of dudes and a few girls at one point just working out like three times a week doing CrossFit. And, uh, you know, we thought, you know, we thought like doing tire flips was CrossFit. So we had like, of course, anyone want to like give us a tire and we couldn't fit it in the door. It, it was a cluster. But. You were running a CrossFit class in a Globo gym? Yeah, pretty much. They wouldn't, uh, the owner wouldn't want me to call it that. Uh, but that's what you were doing. But, yeah, I mean, I, I had a background in athletics and training swimmers and training runners. And I just, I looked at this, I saw it, you know, first time I ever did it, a guy came in Memorial Day weekend, did Murph by himself. And I saw him do a pull ups and push ups and uh, squats with no weight. And I was like, oh, who's this guy? He's like wasting these squats with no barbell. And um, he was warming up. So I was like, hey, what are you doing? He had a CrossFit shirt. And uh, mm. I jumped in with him and did it. Uh, yeah, I was about 185 pounds and like, no body fat and yeah that that was a I did it for about an hour and a half and I took a nap and then I woke up and finished the workout so it took me almost two hours to do it oh my gosh yeah wow. so my first my first wad was Murph and then I was like well that was that was terrible and I felt like dying so naturally I got to do that again yeah and then here, here we are so yeah moved from there to my garage and then eventually to our current facility tell me a little bit about because I never experienced that the the starting in the garage and leveling leveling out how did you first get your your first group of you know because there are some people still you know trying to get involved uh and starting in their garage starting personal training businesses out of the garage how did you get started from in your garage how did you get your first few clients and then how did you decide to make the shift and, and upgrade to a to an actual space when i started i was already at uh a gym here and it was a it was a chain gym i was already the manager I'd worked from, I'd worked there for almost four and a half, five years from cleaning equipment to selling memberships to personal training to eventually being the, the staff manager and, and running the majority of it uh, up until the point where they moved, which was like closed down and open up to a different name. And, you know, I already had, I was lucky I already had like a good base of personal training clients. 
And as many people know, like that's a higher ticket thing than a group membership. So I was able to sustain myself with my personal training clients. And I just started taking them to my garage as soon as it looked like that place wasn't going to be around much longer. Um, and so my garage, it was very, very minimal. I didn't even have like mats. I think I like put down some cheap AstroTurf from Home Depot because, you know, made it look like a field. And uh, which really backfired because my dogs would get in there and love oh, the turf. No. <laughs> yeah. So the turf only lasted like a couple of weeks. And it was like, that's not sanitary. So took that out. But, you know, just had some kettlebells, dumbbells. I eventually would add a barbell. I uh, had my bumper plates for a while. We were just doing like ground overheads and farmer carries with them because I didn't have bars. And uh, so I took my personal training clients there through the day. I had about five clients. And through that, I could sustain my income pretty well. And I, I basically offloaded all my hours at the gym uh, outside of management stuff to everyone else. And I kind of locked myself in my, you know, my home office whenever I wasn't training a client. And I just made myself write out a business plan for a CrossFit gym. And the, the going to the garage is, if I could go back and start all over again, I'd go right back to the garage because it's the lowest overhead. I, was already, I already had a mortgage. And the lower your overhead, the more staying power that you have. And the more craziness that you can deal with, the more ups and downs. So that was how I kind of got started into it. I just took my PT clients into there. And then in the mornings, I started uh, having a morning class and an evening class around 530. And I let people come in. It was free to start off with. Like, hey, let me teach you some stuff. Friends, families, neighbors, anybody who kind of gets referred. And I just taught them CrossFit stuff. And we worked out as a group in the morning and the evening. And thankfully, I had a really long driveway because that, that exploded over the course of about two and a half months. And we had the cops called on us a few times for making noise. Oh, wow. And, uh, so, yeah, you, and, uh, so you just got friends of friends and people referred and that was it. Yeah, it was, it was, all, it was all word of mouth. I think I, I had a Facebook page, but I think I maybe got on it twice. But it was, it was really word of mouth and people coming and, and liking it and enjoying it and then just bringing their friend. And it's, it's really what a lot of the two brain stuff is with affinity, you know, you know, with people having their, their social circle that they're, they're close with. And they're like, I want to bring this person to experience what I've experienced. And that's really how we started. And then we moved to here after about almost four months. Uh, it was a lot of people. It was a really hot day. I had a two car garage, not big enough to sustain all the people we had. At this point, I think I had like four barbells and they're all out in the driveway and you had, it was on a hill. So you had to like put plates under to stop them from oh rolling. My yeah, probably, I probably should have had some better insurance back then. And uh, yeah, two girls came in and it was, it's, it's interesting how it like happened. I wish I could like find them and thank them. I got to look them up on Facebook. Uh, they came in and they had gone to work that day, came by uh, to work out in the evening with us. And they didn't have like all their stuff with them to like change and get, you know, done up or, or get done down kind of get out of work clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't have like their, their makeup or lotion or anything or uh, deodorant was the key factor that was missing here. It was really hot and it was a small garage and it smelled bad because <laughs> we're because everyone's just sweating really bad. And it was like, woo, one of you guys and uh, her name was Katie and it came right to me. It's like, we are not, it was us, we forgot, but this is a great point. She was a business development advisor, which is interesting. She's like, we are not coming back here until you make this a real thing. So like find a real place and make a real gym. Uh, and that was kind of the boost that I needed. You know, I, I didn't believe as much in myself back then. And so to have someone else tell you, and they kind of, they're a business development person. This is what they do. And they're like, you're good enough. Go do it. And uh, left that weekend, drove around everywhere, and found this place that I'm at now. And uh, I think I leased it out. I convinced the guy to do I was 22, so I didn't have any credit. And I didn't have any, like, business history. And I was like, yeah, I want to put a gym in this big building that you have for storage and, like, you had horses in or whatever. And, uh, and he's, like, a really nice guy that just had property, had a building. He's not a commercial landlord guy. And he was, like, really opposed to it at first. And... I just stayed on him like all weekend long. Um, I started 
calling him Thursday. I met him Friday, called him Friday evening, called him Saturday morning and evening. And I finally convinced him to do it for me. And he would charge me one third of the payment on our first month, two thirds on the second month, and then full payment on the third month. And my promise to him was like, look, I'll know in three months if this is going to work or not. And you're not out anything. I'll clean up your building and everything. And then from there, you know, put me on a lease because it'll take me three months to figure it out. But I'll, I'll, I don't really know what to tell you other than I'll make it happen. And I'm here in front of you. So trust me, I'll make it happen. And uh, you know, he liked that. I was like a young guy. I guess I reminded him of himself a little bit. And he was like, yeah, I'll give this kid a shot. And it's been great ever since. We haven't had to move. And we're looking at hopefully buying the property soon. So it just kind of comes down to numbers. But I think that's the whole story. That's amazing. And it's amazing because you actually got your first taste of business mentorship there to that one, that client of yours basically was like, you, yeah. need to, you need to do this. And this is how you, like, you need to do this or else, or else basically. The, the key was uh, action. Yeah. You know, I just, I would daydream and get in the clouds and, and I would talk about like what I would do if I had like a big gym and how it'd be different. And like, it was just daydreaming. So you know, dream in the clouds, but work in the dirt, right? So she was like, go work in the dirt. And when, when did you decide to sign up with Two Brain and, and actual, pr- and pursue some more, uh, more business mentorship, really? Yeah, uh, I think I signed up at the, I signed up at the end of 2016. And I think my first phone call was actually with Chris. And I had gotten to, I had really gone through some ups and downs in my personal life. And, you know, it really, I'd kind of fallen into like this depression state and I wasn't familiar with it. It was, it was really new to me. And it was just affecting the business in a really negative way. And I just, I wasn't operating at the level that I was when I started and grew it. And for a while, we just kind of, we stayed really stagnant. And then you know, I kind of got myself up out of a funk a little bit, started listening to like Tony Robbins podcast and like how to like get yourself out of this and, uh, you know, talking to people and getting outside of my own head, got some of that energy back. And over the course of about like four months or so, grew the gym a good bit, uh, grew the feelings of, of, you know, goodness in here and friendship and connectedness. And everything felt really good for a little bit. And like, I kind of had this spark, um, and at the time when things were going really bad, I actually, you know, to, to be a really vulnerable and, you know, to not, you know, play it down. And I didn't even have a home. I was sleeping at the gym and like had lost a whole lot of everything that my life looked like at that time. And so over the course of about a year was that, and I would sleep at the gym for a year, but like for a few months I was. And over the course of a few months, got my stuff together. I got a house a dog a nice yard i was like okay things are good and i remember this uh the way i think chris maybe put it one time like i was things are going well and it's i feel like someone's like up in the clouds with an anvil just waiting to drop it on me like when's something gonna go wrong and i've been following chris's stuff since three two one go i think i'd even messaged chris on facebook back in like the you know um you know before two brain days and so i was like I don't want this to stop. I want this to keep going and I can't do the same thing that I did before and expect it to be a difference. So I'm just going to call this guy. And so call Chris, this is right. I think, uh, two brain had been around for a little bit, like as it's, as it's, uh, as it currently is now. And so I didn't really know what to expect because it was still a little new to me. And I've had a talk with Chris for like 30 minutes and you know, he just, the best thing was that he listened and he cared about like, like what I wanted. And it wasn't just like, here's how you're going to make a whole bunch of money. Cause that, like, that wasn't it for me. I was like, it's the whole package. Like it's, I want to have a great life and I want other people to have a great life. Cause I was here. And he's like, so this, this got a couple one-time problems. Okay. Yeah, we can work on that. Let's go ahead and start you in the incubator. I was like in, and I scratched up as much money as I could that I could do. And I, you know, I made the payment and, uh, yeah, from there I just started. So that was a few years ago. And uh, yeah, that was how we started with Two Brain. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, so now that you're, you know, you, you, you've gone through this evolution and some ups and downs, uh, 
how has your business changed? I guess pre, I know you, you said you kind of ha- were in a funk, you got out of it a little bit and that's when you felt like you could take on this, this new, this new journey with two brain. So how has your business changed uh, since joining? I was wearing tons. I was wearing almost every hat when it came to roles in the gym. So I was the head, I was the head coach. I would substitute for anyone else who couldn't coach, which it was kind of a trade for membership coaching style back then, which doesn't give you a whole lot of buy-in from staff at times. Uh, so it led to me subbing a whole lot. Uh, I was the cleaner. I was the janitorial. I was the marketing. I was the sales. I was everything. And since I was so spread apart, I wasn't really great at any one thing because I couldn't focus really well. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what I was good at and where I needed to be and like what role I would be successful in. Um, so definitely not in the ownership role because I was doing all these other things working in the business. And before to rain, I really worked hard to get to where I was level again, but I wasn't working on a way to sustain that and a way to get out of all of these roles and grow to uh, grow the business so that it could support itself and that staff could support themselves in here as well. Um, so that everything was organized and that I wouldn't be overworked. So before two brain, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say we were profit. I say we were breaking even sometimes like a good amount of the time we weren't. And then we had like little bouts of, you know, breaking even. And then after two brain, uh, everything became really sustainable and geared towards, you know, how will this work long term? Where does this really put us in six months, one year, even further down the road? And how's that sustainable for you and all of your staff? And, you know, working on, you know, the real problems at hand, which was, it's not, I'm, I'm in this position, because I didn't do things right the first time. It was, I'm in this position because I wasn't ever thinking about how do we stay out of this position to where I'm always working hard. So, and I still work hard every day. I mean, it never stops. I just focus on what I'm good at now. And I'm not, you know, I'm not doing all of the, the admin work, for example. I'm terrible at that. So we have uh, a manager. Um, when you look at all these roles now, we have people who do our sales and marketing, and we have staff members who do that. We have people who do personal training sessions. We have people who do coaching group classes. We have a manager who handles a lot of the back end, and then I'm in the leadership role where it comes to a lot of the uh, support for those actual roles. So, and we also have financial as well to help keep track of where are we now, where do we want to be when it comes to further down the road, what are we doing with the income to make sure it's sustaining this model that works. So beforehand, no model. After two brain, model, model that works. Everyone's happier. So before you were wearing all the hats, you didn't have a lot of time. You were breaking even. And then after, I guess now you're saying you you wear one hat, which is growing the business and Mm -hmm. developing your staff and you're profitable basically now too. Yeah, yeah. the gym's profitable. Uh, the staff can, I mean, they can choose, you know, we want them to work on what's, what's gonna help them get to their perfect day. And so if they want to have a full-time career here, they're able to do that. I have two guys now that actually are, they're full-time here, it's all they do. Um, and they do really well for themselves. They work as much as they like uh, on the things that they like. It's the same for me. I don't coach unless I want to. Uh, which I do. So I still coach once in a while. And I feel like it's important to know what I'm asking of coaches and what I'm asking of personal trainers too. So I kind of stay in that a little bit and I don't, I don't let myself get too far removed to where we lose like that empathy um, and that ability to connect with each other. But, you know, at this point it's now, I work almost purely on CEO stuff and, you know, supporting everyone else and mentoring the staff so that they can, so that they can build, you know, the best experience in their perfect day here with us. Shifting gears a little bit, because now you have this uh, this well oiled well oiled machine, this business that's running itself. In your words, what what would you say? What is it? What is it that you sell, and how do you sell it? So, we sell. You know, our values are. If you see them on our our gym's logo, which is getting redesigned, like this is our old one. 
like real workouts, real results. That's from like 2012. Um, and it's grown over the years. It's not about working out anymore. Like what we sell, we call it sweat, smile, repeat, which is you're going to come in you're going to have a great workout, but you're really going to enjoy it. And you're going to repeat it because like you have the accountability of all of your peers in the group class. You have the coaches as well and you have people doing it professionally. So sweat, smile, repeats, how we kind of package that. And we look at it as staff, but our goal is to sell you the, is we sell uh, a transformation to living a better life through health and exercise and to have a whole lot of fun doing it. That's it. And how do you market this to people? So with, with the website, with our social media, with all of our blog posts, with our videos, the key is consistency. Like almost everything else, it's we consistently make sure that our values are really clear. And like even in our update show podcast that we do, uh, we've been doing it for the open, giving it to our members. That's been really popular, really fun. Uh, we have a TV in the background as a picture of uh, one of our younger coaches. And he's like giving a fist bump to one of our members. And she's like 66. And it's just like completely changed her life. And they're both smiling and they're both having a great time. That's important. And then we have a little bit, we have our logo, but underneath it in really big white and red, we say sweat, smile, repeat, and smiles emphasized. That's important. When you look at our competitions, any materials we release, um, we talk about if you want to come have a great day and build a lot of memories with people that you care about doing a sport that you love, this is a competition for you. Like we say it like that. We don't say come over, podium, win a whole bunch of cash, right? So in, when you look at the, the rest of it, we push that people are here having fun. People are engaging other people. Uh, people are smiling. So it's kind of the, the, out, it's the opposite of what you see in a regular gym. And that's what we want to have more of. So that's what we push out to people as well. We want to push out what we want to bring in. And that's the sweat, smile, repeat philosophy that we have. So when it comes to messaging, that's what we do. Um, when it comes to marketing and onboarding people, we used to do what a lot of CrossFits did, which is, you know, come try a free class. And then we kind of grew out of that a little bit and coached into uh, come do a foundations group class. It starts at these times on these days, you got to make it. And if you can't, well, I guess we lose you as a client. That's kind of how that worked. And now, especially since two brain, uh, we do all of our on ramping is done one on one and we give people, you know, what's best for them. First is we sit and talk to you. What's important to you. Why is that important? And we back build a plan to get you there. And based off of what we've learned and gotten your, your history, uh, learned a lot about you, then we recommend where we would start. So we go one-on-one -on -one with everybody almost every time. And sometimes it doesn't even mean group class afterwards. It just means personal training. Or sometimes it's just nutrition. Uh, we just do the right thing for that person, the best way to help them. And that's how we onboard them. So all of our marketing is kind of done on come book a no sweat intro to learn you know, how we can help you. And then we go from there. So all of our members know from us as coaches, and you guys have anybody who's interested, here's a link. Here's actually a, you know, we share a whole lot of stuff too. You can book a no sweat intro. Everything goes to book the no sweat intro. And um, we do that through, we've done it through Facebook paid ads before, uh, but still the majority of uh, people that we have come in has been through people who've been really happy with us and they want to share what they've experienced. You mentioned you have some people on your staff who are take the lead on on this process. So let's say someone sees this messaging, sees, oh, wow, this looks like a really fun place to go work out. They find your website, whether it's through a paid ad or whether a friend told them about it. They inquire, what happens? Yeah, so their information will come to us. And as soon as we get uh, their information, we, we want to have their their name, their email address, and their phone number so we can, of course, contact them. And if one of those things is wrong, we can try email if the phone's wrong. If the email doesn't work, we can try the phone. And we, we basically go through a lead nurture process, which is just the, the point is to get them in the door so that we can learn, is this a good fit and how can we help you? And that's, it's, it's always one step at a time. We don't have the goal of selling them anything. We don't have the goal of you know, giving them a, a whole plan over the phone. The goal is like, just get in so we can learn about you. And uh, that looks like uh, 
phone calls, it's just the same way we learned in two brain marketing, which is to make sure we're calling them regularly. When we get them on the phone, learn a little bit. Yeah, I think this would be great. We have some time. When would be good for you? We meet them. They come in, they do a no sweat intro. And then from there we learn how we can help them. And we recommend the best thing for them and go from there. And before when it was just you trying to do all this, um, I guess what were your results like? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> what were your results like when you, it was just you wearing all the hats and now that you have a dedicated staff member to follow up with people and, and handle this process, how's that been yeah. different? Yeah. So when it was just me, uh, I'm sure a lot of people who have been in this place before can identify it was people would walk through your door in the middle of you coaching a class and there's no one to help. And you're like, I'll be right with you. And later on, if they're still around, maybe you can go talk to them a little bit. Yeah. Come try a class or, uh, you know, that's how it started. And then with group intro, we kind of changed it into someone would come in and I had a clipboard. It's just a blank sheet of paper. I was like, anyone comes in, write their name and their email on this and I'll get back to them. And like, we'd still miss that stuff sometime. But now, you know, we have a, we have a process, we have the roles and tasks associated with this stuff. And we don't have to, um, we don't have to load up our coaches with this extra work that they may or may not have signed on for. They can be great at coaching and they can work great at coaching. And the person in charge of lead nurture stuff can be great at lead nurture. So it's pretty much, uh, we're in a place now where like our, our gym's at a place that's a really great capacity for us. You know, we'll take more personal training people on board. But before it was, you know, we may grow a little bit at a time and we'll lose some and we'll grow some, lose some, grow some. Uh, but with having a, a, an actual, you know, like a well-oiled machine and roles and tasks written out, it's uh, we're at a point now where we, we have everything turned off. We have to keep the ads turned off most of the time because we don't, we don't have that capacity uh, any further, which has kind of led us to now we're having another location open up within this month. And then we're planning a third one actually a little bit further away as well to help, you know, with that, like if we're at capacity here, how can we diversify and keep pushing our mission to sweat, smile, and repeat? We got to grow. I didn't so. know about that. I didn't know you yeah. were in another location. Oh yeah. My That's my bright spots, bro. You got to like them. You got to oh like or comment. That's amazing, man. Congrats. I'm excited for you. So tell yeah, me a little bit about that using paid ads um, in your experience, using some of the tr strategies we teach in, in the marketing section of the incubator, you know, what was your experience and maybe tell us some of the other things you've used paid ads for that maybe some people might not think right away to use them for. Yeah. So, uh, when we went through, it was, uh, it was you and John actually walking me through everything. Uh, I really enjoyed the process. I love learning new stuff at any point. Like even if it's about something I don't have a ton of interest in, if it's new to me, I'm interested. So I got to learn a whole bunch. I was really interested. The content, the videos were all great. And the best part was they were all short and I could get off of a lesson and go set something up and I could like test it. Um, so when we started doing, I got through the incubator course for two brain marketing, set my ads up. You helped me out a little bit. I think we had like an issue with audiences. It was really a Facebook issue and there's no way I could have fixed that, but you'd like made a call. Cause like they'll talk to, you know, big money, Mateo. <laughs> and they had it fixed really fast. And uh, the most important thing that, that I don't think I was prepared for was the amount of people who were actually interested in what we were putting up. And we got a whole lot of leads and I, I was overwhelmed because at the time it was just me. And that was where we started getting to, okay, I remember when they talked about roles and tasks, you should have someone do this stuff. About two weeks into having the ads turned on with you guys, I realized how just how important that was because I didn't have enough time in the day to make the calls. And I also didn't have enough time today in the day to answer the calls too. So having someone dedicated to be at the phone, to be able to pick up, to be able to call, to be able to actually do something with the influx of interest and people who want your service was, was really important. So you gotta, you kind of got to be ready for that. And I didn't really prepare for it the best right away, but it got me to, move and prepare really well uh, as I was learning in that first month. So um, that was my first experience with paid ads. And I think our ad cost was, you know, per lead, it was somewhere around like six or $7 per lead. And, you know, if we get them in the door, it's almost 
you know, it, it's basically like, here's how we can help you. It's not a pushy sales process. So if they came in the door, most of the time they signed up. So it was a very huge return on intro, uh, investment. And something you did that I thought was amazing was you took some of the, some of the strategies and some of the, some of the templates and you started to sell out some of your competitions. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, I've run competitions since 2012. Like, you know, we started in April and I saw like one competition here in the capital city. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. We're doing one. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was like, we're just gonna do one because I said so. And we did in December. And since then I've been running them. And it always had, uh, it had always been a, a process of, hey, announce we're gonna, announce we're gonna run it, like, hey, remember, we're gonna run it on this day, and then wait for people to sign up, kind of give them a link to sign up, and hope that people spread it. And then basically, like, a few people will sign up over the course of however much time you gave for them to do so, maybe like, like a month, or, you know, a few, even worse, a few weeks. And then all towards the very last cutoff date, like we got to order shirts by this day for everybody. So it's our cutoff day. Everybody would sign up and it's, that can, that can be stressful. So I was thinking, you know, we have teams of four in some competitions we've had in the past. Um, we've had teams of two and I always had emails from people who signed up, like just the team captains. So if we had 20 teams of four, that's 80 athletes, we still only had 20 email addresses. And I didn't even think to use email marketing to them uh, at that point. But once I'd gone through the two brain uh, marketing incubator, it's like, you know, it's really important to market to the right person and the person most likely to sign up with us again. And also most likely to like come here and have a great time. And like at our competitions, which is about having a great time with your friends are people who have come here and already done that. So I marketed the first one. I set up a little funnel and I like, I honestly just copied the exact like challenge funnel that you guys taught me. And I changed the color and I put a different video in. And I think like at the bottom, it still said like six week women's challenge um, for my competition. So like that was, that was just how simple it was. And I sent out an email to all of our past athletes. I had in our MailChimp list. Hey, we're going to be running this and go to this page. And I'd set it up to where they can just sign up on that page. And that's this way they had to give me every email address for their team. And so if you have a team of four, and I think that time that we did it, we had like 30, I think we had like 32 teams sign up. And at four athletes, we're like 120 plus people. I had a great competition. It was definitely sold out. Um, having something nice to send them to that collected all their information was great. Uh, the back end of that, uh, on the back side of that page, was once they put their information in, they went into an email automation of, here's some things to bring for your event to make sure you have a great time. Here's a link to change your athletes out if you need to sub anything. And it was just keeping contact with them. And I think having that contact really kept them in the know and kept them uh, on track with, or, or we kept in front of them really well. And they would tell their friends about it. So we also sent out like workout video demonstrations, which we shot on an iPhone with me and another member. They were very basic things, uh, but they went a long way. So that first one worked really well. The second one, we got a bit um, even, you know, more clever about it. And we went to, here's the page. You can't sign up yet, but if you want to know the wads and be the first to know, go ahead and put your info in here. And then we can market it directly to that person again along with the you know 120 plus people that came last time and when you think about well it only takes one person to put together a team so out of 120 people i only need to have you know a fourth of them actually be interested in this so it went out to them it went out to the people who were interested and then once we opened the gates for people to register 24 hours were sold out and so we opened up another heat and then that sold out we continue this process, we do the exact same way. Uh, we just had our Valentine's Day competition and we had 42 teams in that one. And that was, we sold out like 72 hours, we sold out another heat, we opened it up another heat again, sold that heat out, and then 
it's just like with the paid ads that we do in CrossFit or in CrossFit and Facebook, you kind of have to turn them off. Um, what we've done here is, you know, we did paid ads on that first one, but afterwards we just stuck straight to email and stuck to our list of returning athletes. And we, our ad cost is basically zero now, but I, I still use the same system that two brain marketing taught. I just use it in email instead of actually putting it on Facebook. I love that. Yeah, you've built up a, a, a large enough audience that now you're just able to you have a big enough pool. So when you're ready to re-engage them with this offer that you have, I don't know how often, once a quarter or whatever, I don't know what you, how often yes. you do comps. So we, we did do them once per quarter. Um, they've gotten fairly big and they're, they're bigger operations now that, that my staff run. I actually competed in our last one, so I, don't, I didn't do any of it. I taught them over two competitions what to do. It's like, here's how to run it here. You're going to run about half of it and I'm going to help you. And then like you guys are fully running this one. Oh, by the way, I just registered. So I can't help you anymore. So like there's, it was like, you know, if you want to take the aisle and burn your boats. So I was like, okay, I literally can't do anything because it's a conflict of interest. I'm a competitor. And um, yeah, so I just step-by-step step grew it into that place. But yeah, definitely having a big pool and taking advantage of people who have already uh, experienced your service. Yeah, I mean, we weren't. I stopped marketing to just anybody who would look, and just like, hey, you like our gym, you like the experience you had last time. Why don't you come do the next one? And it, it worked so much better. It's just like our Facebook ads. We usually we got a little them open for a little bit and then turn them off. I love that. Yeah, it's it's really just that's where <laughs> getting a, a repeat buyer from someone who's already who's already engaged, like you said, with your service is is definitely an easier sell than going to a stranger. Um, so that's amazing. So you've gone through this journey, you've experienced a lot in, in, in a short amount of time, you know, starting from the gym, getting the new gym, or, or starting from your garage, getting the new space, going through a funk, getting out of it, growing even more with some of the paid advertising strategies, and now getting to this point where you're opening new, new facilities and potentially, uh, you know, becoming a two brain mentor yourself what do you think has been the key to your success so far mentorship because if you if you track it back to the garage i mean i can even track it back further to when i was training clients in the globo gym i don't think that i would have i don't think i would have taken advantage of that little spark of entrepreneurialism had i not had people with a voice of you can do it and from there it was a voice of go do it with my garage and um from there it was you can you can keep doing this and you can do it better let me show you how and it was the like the let me show you how and being held accountable and having somebody to bounce ideas off of and for them to take you know your five big ideas and go like let's leave those four for another time but this one right here is going to put you in a much better position than just even a month and in two months and three months if you will if you will wholly work on this one instead of spreading yourself thin. So mentorship was the, the key shift there and, you know, following the right people and surrounding yourself with the right people. So it's kind of, you think back to the whole, you're the sum of five people that you surround yourself with. And something I've, I've kind of talked with other professionals about, and I, I mentor some other professionals around here is when they're setting their rates and setting their prices and they come in and most most of the time uh, just like how i originally thought i was going to set my prices what's everyone else charging let's do five bucks less which was not the way to go because like they have their own model and you go off my model and that has nothing to do with what i want in my life so um going with the whole approach of surround yourself with five look at also like who are you following in business as well who are you getting your ideas from who are you bouncing ideas off of and if you're just following other gyms on facebook that's a little that's quite a bit different than following some of the best business owners and some of the some of the most impressive entrepreneurs and authors and systems people around and also people who just have a really good touch on what it's like to run a gym and to do it successfully and sustainably so i made sure after i think after my first call with chris uh, I'm no, I'm no longer going to follow, follow gyms that I think look impressive or have great you know, athletes for that reason. Like I might, I might follow athletes on Instagram, but 
I want to follow the gyms who have been around for a long time, have been really successful, have changed a lot of lives. And or I mean, like, do you think about like the last post of 10 year affiliates? Like I'm following a lot of those guys now. Cause you think like, where do I want to be? What's my perfect day look like? You know, it's, it's, I want to be more like these things. So I surround myself with those. And uh, that started with mentorship. Amazing. Yeah. I think that's really the key. One of the key differences about the incubator and, and two many is, is the mentorship piece. I think that's the really unique part about what we do. So Jeff, thanks for hopping on today. Uh, if people want to talk to you more, where can they find you? If someone wants to sign up for this amazing competition. Where can they yeah. find you? So they will have to hop a flight on a bald eagle down here to Little Rock, Arkansas, because that's uh, our airport is, you know, it's got perches instead of land, landing runways. Um, or you can send me a message via carrier pigeon. Um, <laughs> no, actually, you can just email me, Jeff at West Little Rock CrossFit dot com. Uh, you can also um, you can also always go to our website as well. Check out anything we have. We have a blog. I'm really big on publishing content. Uh, our Instagram's got plenty. Our Facebook is on there. You can also also reach us through those too. And uh, on our website blog, we've got over a thousand posts with all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, it's really helpful for gym owners too. But you can always just reach out to me. And I'm hey, happy uh, to talk. We might have you on again just to talk about content marketing and how you do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. Well, thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk to you later. See, see you guys.